So, communication. It's something that all of you do all the time. Not a day goes by without you communicating with someone in some way. But we're going to look at some ways um, that are interesting for innovation platforms in terms of their communication channels and the options available to them. So three main roles. One is to take care of engagement and dialogue. Another is to document and outreach methods. And the third one is for learning. So they're quite distinct, but there are ways that overlap over all three. Tools for engagement and dialogues can, incl can include a facilitated meeting, as simple as that, or an event. This, for instance, is a form for engagement and dialogue. We can also look at role play and games. We can also look at study tours and exchanges. We can look at networking events. Or we can look at participatory video. We touched on a number of these already today. All of these are tools that can be very effective for engagement and dialogue, depending on how they're done. So here's an example called Wata Game. It's a participatory tool looking at rainwater management issues at a landscape level. So it was used by an innovation platform in Ethiopia to enable the participants to design and run simulations for what would happen under different water management and design options. And it aims to show how the water moves within a landscape, how it is used, polluted, transformed, and by playing it in a game-like environment, a lot of the more serious, defensive voices about different aspects can engage and see uh, some consequences and then be able to discuss them from an easier place. And the same, there's another game, there are many games, you've all played these development games. So getting people to draw, to put stickers, to engage, to stimulate, they all get a lot of participation. There's a saying that I like that goes something like, we don't stop playing because we get old. We get old because we stop playing. Yeah? And I find it very true. So, you know, I've seen 80-year-olds engage in games, you know, come to life. You know, people that at the start of the visit, I look and I say, is that person alive or dead? You know, sitting there, and suddenly a game came up and the person is screaming and dancing and all the rest of it. So, I personally really, really encourage you to take the power of games and apply it in your work wherever you can. <clears throat> Study tours and exchanges are really effective. It's also really effective um, when we're dealing at the policy level. So often, you know, you can write reports till your hand has a cramp and, you know, give them to the minister time and again. But 10 minutes in the field with the farmer and the message can come across so much more vividly. Yeah? So strategic use of tours and exchanges is very useful. And that can be done at all levels. So one innovation platform going over, you know, a few kilometers over to meet another platform and learn from them, coming back, they say, okay, now it's possible. I know it's possible because I've seen the person. And you as a facilitator can say, but I've told you for six months that it's possible and I told you about that group. Yeah, but now I've seen it in my own eyes. It's different. Participatory video I won't go on to again, but it's a very effective use for that as well. So some of these things you see, they don't just tackle one thing. They tackle multiple objectives at once. So it was a tool for power and conflict, but it's also a very good tool for communication. Documentation and outreach tools are very, very many, and you probably know most of these already. You can look at print media, so a newsletter. You can produce a newsletter for your innovation platform. You can look at publications. You can look at posters. Yeah? So there's, there's a lot of print media that is still very effective. We also have digital media. So whether it's video, or whether it's photographs, or whether it's photo films. We also have radio. I mean, 
People get very excited about new technology. Everyone always wants the new and cool gadget. I'm probably worse at that than many of you, yeah? I, I spend my nights dreaming about how I'm going to create virtual reality content for agricultural development in the next couple of years. And my colleagues look at, at me very weird when I say that. But 10 years from now, mark my words, all of us will be consuming virtual reality content and wondering how we lived before that. How did any kind of learning take place before we had virtual reality? But radio, which is considered to be old-fashioned and has been around, radio is by far still the king of rural. Yeah? So if you look at rural penetration, radio is still the number one medium. So it's definitely important, depending on what you're trying to do, to also keep in mind those tools. Mobile messaging. Mobile messaging is the contender to the radio. So we all talk about the fact that everyone has a mobile phone today. So if you can reach people. But reaching people via mobile is not that simple. Especially when we want to reach them for behavior change. If you just want to annoy them with spam messages, that's a different story. But if you want to change behavior via mobile, very complicated. Takes a lot of understanding, takes a lot of interaction, but certainly a strategy. But mobile messaging could be used in other ways. For example, we have WhatsApp groups that innovation platforms use, and they find it the easiest way. It's cheap, almost free to communicate, they get instant information, they share market prices, all the rest of it. So a lot of things that can be done. And of course, you could also think of web-based tools like websites or blogs or social media. So it all depends on who your audience and where they are. Like with any other form of communication, you have to know your audience and how they like to be communicated with. <clears throat> how many here are familiar with the concept of a photo film? Okay. So a photo film can also be done in a participatory video um, method. So let's, let's take one example. It's basically taking both videos and stills and putting some audio together and creating a short three, four minute story that you can then use to, to bring a point across. There's audio subtitles, but it's photos, it's not a video, it's a photo film. So it's capturing the situations that we want to bring across and then putting them together. It's much cheaper and easier to produce than a good video. We can also have online photo repositories, again, depending on, on your audience and so on. Um, this is more relevant, I think, for you than it is for um, local levels, but how many here are familiar with Prezi? Okay, so do you, know, do you know the expression death by PowerPoint? Yes, you've experienced that today. You're like so tired of another PowerPoint coming up and up and more PowerPoint. You go to a three-day conference and all you get is PowerPoint after PowerPoint. That's death by PowerPoint. So the equivalent of that is Vertigo by Prezi. Prezi is another presentation software, can make you very dizzy, but it's, uh, it's kind of fun to look at. Hopefully, this will give you a bit of a toolkit in terms of different options, different resources, but the main point is that communication is really a key fundamental for successful platforms or any multi-stakeholder process. So it's important that you identify the right forms of communications and that you are aware and plan for it. Because having a blind spot on communication can mean the death of a multi-stakeholder platform process. Questions on communications? 